How do you rig midlines? Let me show you in this episode of How Not to Highline. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinks and welcome to my midline. This midline is just a few minutes away from my house and is permanently set up. And I wanna show you how to rig one uh, as I've been asked many times how to do it. First of all, let me define what a midline is. Some people say that it's just a slack line that's uh, too high to fall from. But uh, the definition I use today is a high line that's low to the ground, but high enough that it's safe to take a whipper. And if the main line fails, you still won't hit the ground if you land on the backup. So you can see here that I'm about 30 feet high and this slack line is 100 feet long. So roughly three to one. And I find that to be a good safe uh, ratio for height. So if I have, uh, find 50 or 60 feet up, I could rig something that's about 150 to maybe 180 feet long. So 50 or 60 meters, divide by three folks, I'm gonna use feet here. So if I am 30 feet high on this 100 foot high line, these backup loops are still safe enough for me to take a main line failure and still not hit the ground. Now let me emphasize something real quick. You have to be high enough. That is the number one thing I want you to walk away with from this video. Otherwise you basically rig it like a slack line in the park and throw another line underneath it. That's the quick version. But it's very important to be high enough. I was zealous when I started and I just wanted to get up high and rigging a, a high line Yosemite can be complicated if you're new. So I thought, eh, I have a balcony. I have a tree 30 feet away from the balcony. So I girth hitched my post with a climbing sling and tightened a single piece of webbing, not that a backup would have helped, and makeshift a leash out of a carabiner and I whipped. Now I was only 10, 15 feet off the ground. I was, you know, we're at a height of a balcony. And my head, I did a flipper whipper because I didn't know how to whip, came that close to the ground according to my friends who were watching. So make sure you're high enough in case you're wondering why I call the channel how not to highline. Okay, if you're not sure if your main line were to fail, if you would hit the ground or not, a great way for you to test that would be for you to get on the backup line before you tape it. And by doing that, you, you'll end up sliding down quite a bit. So hang on or use a rope to hang on. Slide out to the middle and see if you're high enough above the ground. Lower yourself onto a leash and make sure you allow enough clearance for the, the rope to stretch or the anchors to cinch down. Now that you know your maximum length for your backup line, you go back up to the anchor and mark it and make sure that it doesn't ever exceed that mark. You could always make it tighter to leave even more of a safety ratio, but at least you know and you're not guessing whether or not you'll be safe if the main line were to fail. So check out our other video where we set up a line uh, just right above this one, slid out a haul bag on this full of rocks and then cut the main line. And we got to see how close it got to the ground. Now keep in mind, that was excessively large loops that we tested. The loops I have here are only half as loopy. So that was, I would consider worst case scenario. And that gives us the three times as long as you are high rule that I completely pulled out of my ass. So I'd like to just plug real quick my Patreon account. I'm asking for one stoke dollar per episode if you enjoy watching this channel. I try to make every episode a little bit better either in quality or content uh, than the last one. And that's why they progressively get better. But it does cost a little bit of money to do that. And if I have some help with that, it will make it easier for me to make these better. Please get involved and donate $1 to my Patreon account. So location was very important on where to put it on this tree. This tree does not have branches down low anymore. And um, I didn't want it to be hard to get on and off because if you're just hanging here, it could be, it could be a bitch. So there are two branches. You can see that I'm standing on here and here. And that gives me a nice stable platform to kind of stand while I'm tying in. Now the other side doesn't really have a good uh, spot to get on and off, but I'm never trying to do that over there. So this tree just happened to have a really great place for me to rig the line. You can see here that I wrap my span set around the uh, fork in this tree. 
and that's a nice place for it to sit. Now you don't have to have a fork. Um, it just happened to be a nice spot, which is about uh, four feet up from where I can stand comfortably. Do I really have to use a disclaimer that says, use a tree that's big enough? Please don't use a tree like these ones over here. Those are too skinny. If it's something you're willing to slackline on, double it, and that's probably big enough. Remember, my number one advice for safety is to make sure your high line is high enough. But my number one advice for ease of use is to make sure that your rope goes above the master point. The rope that I jug up here with is 10 to 15 higher than my master point right here. Otherwise, if you're jugging a rope, you can't come obviously to the very, very top of it. It's tied, it's got a knot and it's attached to your harness. You would end up being about four feet lower than your master point, and then you gotta do some possibly sketchy things, depending on how you tie yourself in, to get up to where you can tie your leash on. So you can see here that my ascender is higher than my master point, but lower than the very top. And that gives me the flexibility to go in and out, to work comfortably down here and tie in easily. Now, what I have up there is another fork that I wrapped the rope around and just tied a figure eight. And you can see how I've padded everything really well because this is a long-term rig. Technically, even short-term rigs should be padded. But anyways, what you see right here is just an independent wrap around and a figure eight coming off of that independently. And this allowed me to have two points of contact between um, my jug rope tail and the other branch that I tied off. And this thing is the thing that I can tie off my tails to, which I'll get to in a little bit. So I highly recommend putting your access rope much higher than the master point, which will give you so much flexibility to work around this. Now, uh, how you get up a tree, I have no idea. I used a ladder to get halfway up and then girth hitched slings around the tree. It was a little janky. Anyways. That is not what I'm good at, so I'm not going to uh, show you how to do that. But anyways, once you're up your tree, you tie off your rope, and you kind of have to do it on both sides before you basically even start. And of course, it helps having a second person. You don't need a second person. You could just attach your fixed sides, rappel down, and come up. But anyways, these ropes are the bomb. Now, this is not my house. Uh, I paint houses, and this is one of my customers' houses. So every few months I do a little paint job for them to rent the top half of their trees. Um, it's pretty fun trying to explain that to somebody who's never seen slacklining before. Hey, can I walk on a rope 30 feet in the sky in your backyard? So anyways, I didn't want the rope just coiled on the ground. I want this to kind of be out of sight, out of mind, right? Um, I do regret not cutting my rope longer. I put it at about waist level and just like that you want more than you need. You technically want more rope than you need at the bottom. Um, if you rappel off the end of your rope, you're already on the ground, but I mean, you kind of fall on your ass if you do that accidentally. So this is not complicated. Um, I hope you slackline before you try doing something like this so you understand kind of what it takes to rig between two trees. But anyways, this is a 12 foot span set that is folded in half and uh, wrapped around just like you see here. And then I I have all this gear that I just never use because I don't, you know, use big shackles anymore. So I thought, what a great place to put this stuff for a permanent line. Here's a big fat uh, shackle. Now you can see I duct tape carpet to it. Uh, padding a tree is important, but if you're gonna leave something up for a long period of time, padding your equipment's important too, even a span set. So it goes from the span set to a rigging plate that I have no use for. Um, I don't see the value of rigging plates, even if I'm rigging long lines. I just embed my uh, gree gree or my brake inside of my pulleys. So um, uh, these are nice for some things, but I just put it up here, which gives me flexibility to do a lot of things because I, I come up here, I experiment, I've done videos up here in the past. But anyways, um, another steel shackle. Um, on a web lock that I don't really use anymore. I use the 4.0s or the pure shackles. So this is all gear that's not old. It's just stuff that um, I'm not gonna prefer to use out on 
an expedition. So this is great gear for a midline. So I've had this set up for about a year and a half. You can see how it's discoloring some of the equipment, how you get uh, discolorations, things like that in uh, where the dirt sits. Um, but the webbing, of course, you cannot leave up here for that long, especially in the sun, the rain, the wind. Um, this is Arrow 2. I change out my webbing every nine months to a year. Um, and even then, that's kind of pushing it, I feel. I'm not too concerned about the dirt on this because it's a span set. It's like super bummer. But my jug line, this is getting kind of old. Um, I definitely want to change this out soon. I like to clip off my leash or tie it off. And so I just put it right there on the rigging plate. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So as you can see here, my backup is a frost knot. Now, if you are gonna use a frost knot, make sure that the main line, which is uh, this line here, is sandwiched in between this bottom loop and the tail, and that puts it in the middle of the knot. Um, the bend radius in knots is what makes it bad. A web lock has a nice bend radius, and so it uh, retains more strength of the webbing than a knot. This knot has been um, favored among people for holding, I think, around 60-ish percent of the strength of the webbing, which um, is fine for this backup line in this situation. I like to take these tails and I like to tie them off to this carabiner up here, which is um, tied to two points up there. So really I have two more master points that these tails are tied off to in case something were to go wrong with my master point, uh, which is reassuring even though it is bomber. Before we continue, let me share with you the Church of Slack Life. Go to slackline.com and join the church by sharing your Slack Life testimony. The Church of Slack Life has its own YouTube channel, so make sure you go to that and subscribe to see our weekly sessions, which is everyone who's stoked about the Slack Life sharing the Slack Life. And don't let the R word scare you. We're not your average religion. We don't manage your morality. We're just here for each other and want to cherish the stoke. There's also options for really cool shirts on the church website, like this one here. So go on there, check out what other people have put, check out the shirts, and get involved. Okay, so now I'm on the other side. Now this is an awkward side. I have to use a daisy in order to uh, not slide to the middle. There's really nowhere to stand. Um, but here I have the span set, just like the other side, carpeted over the branches. And then I have uh, sewing loops right here. In order not to crowd out my, my backup point here, is uh, I put a big Delta Quick Link in here, then clipped a steel beaner to that. So it's not so uh, clustered up. But anyways, um, how do you back up those tails? Now you can see here that the second loop on the Balanced Community webbing, as they come with two loops, is clipped to my rope that I jugged up here with originally to rig. Now I rarely, if ever, jug up this rope um, because this is not the side that I tie into. The leash is over there. But you never know, even if it's a span set or a steel connector, if it's gonna fail. So I always like to back it up to something extra. Now I don't feel like I should have to say this, but I'm going to. Please don't do this in the park. Do this on your own land or land of friends that you know. But don't just try to go up trees in the park, rig this, and get slacklining shut down for everyone. Slacklining's already an access issue in park. I just can't imagine if people started to try to do midlines in the park, you know? You can see over there where the branches are that I can't walk the last 10 feet of this line. I also technically can't walk the last few feet of this line because I have this branch there. So this midline and most midlines you do, you won't be able to walk the last few feet of either anchor. So you are limited how long you can rig these, um, but it's more fun to do tricks on them and just go back and forth than it is to try to get a send. Okay, so I'm halfway down this rappel and I wanna make a few notes on what not to do with your jug line. So there's two points worth mentioning here. One, is this branch is awesome to step on, but do you see how the rope touches it? Um, I duct taped carpet to there, obviously. Um, you also wanna make sure that this rope isn't going to rub your slack line uh, or your anchor or your rope, because I mean, you, you don't want this to break either. 
Um, so you really got to be conscious of that since your rope goes higher than your slack line. You don't want any nylon sign going on while you jug this rope. Okay, fun fact. Make sure your rope is long enough because my feet aren't quite on the ground yet, but here's my tail. So it's always unnerving when you come off this thing because you could land on your ass. You can see here that it only comes to my chest and it'd be really nice if it came to, well, the ground. Okay, in case you don't know how to ascend a rope, there's lots of ways to skin this cat. I'm just gonna show you how I do it at our midline. Um, and a cinder is helpful, but I only use one. Um, I have a daisy um, personal anchor that I connect myself to in case the grigri were to slip. It could happen, you never know. And um, I've got my grigri on there with my short ass tail. So my preference is just to push the ascender up, which is what um, my hand here holding the gimbal is, holding the ascender. And then I just step up in the um, the aider that I have here, the rope ladder, and then I just stand up and pull the grigri through the uh, device there. And um, I like doing that because it's redundant. Um, if the grigri were to slip for any reason, my personal anchor is on the ascender. And um, I just have two ways that I'm connected to this rope. And then when I get up there, the grigri is already on, so I can't install it wrong and then slide down the rope and possibly kill myself. So I know the Grigory's on correctly before I ever get up there um, or I wouldn't be able to get up there. So I like having both the ascender and the Grigory. I can slide the ascender up and cinch up my personal anchor and sit in that. Or I can cinch up my Grigory here and sit in that. So just the carabiner shifting. And this way I'm in um, safely connected to this tree in two ways. My personal anchor and my grigri while I tie into my leash here. Now when I first set up this midline, Kim was new to ascending. She wasn't super familiar with it. So I know that this grigri is incorrectly, is in correctly um, when she's up here. Once you're tied in, you just unclip it and let it hang here, and then it's ready for you to go um, back down. Just uh, don't forget the ascender. We've done that a couple times. Just because midlines are lower to the ground doesn't mean they're safer. They actually have a higher risk because you're close enough to the ground to hit it, even if your equipment doesn't fail. So make sure you take a lot of precautions and you still might get hurt. Therefore, you shouldn't midline.